sunset Hand blowing smoke, catch a contact when your school tells you to play louder on the bass drum. Bam, bam, bam. <laughs> yeah, you can really hear his top voice really well. That's awesome. Hey, let's go. Honestly, I can't fault his grip or his technique or just the sound that he's making. It's really, really nice. Like the grip is just, woo, like. Ooh, ooh. Very accurate double verticals. Ooh, that's nice. I really like how he's being super gentle with everything. Like it's so refreshing. Yeah! Sorry. <laughs> Good morning, welcome to another episode of The Studio. My name is Adam. It's time for yet another Let's Watch Out! Thank you so much to my studio VIPs, Robert Utomo, Bradley Crowley, Ryan Carlos, Sungshun Han, Scott Rader, Greg Harris, DMP Newberger, J. Carol Gilliland. Thank you so much for your continued support. And today's featured studio artist is Rachel Lipson. Thank you so much for your continued support. If you'd like to become a studio VIP or a studio artist, go to patreon.com forward slash Adam Tan or you can click over here. Welcome back to the show once again. Hope you've been well. Hope you've been staying safe. And just a couple of updates about what's happening in the next couple of months. So firstly, in July, there's going to be a festival called Marimba Fest. If you've followed my channel before, I am currently working on the same festival that we did in 2019. But yes, this year we made a pandemic safe version for Australian residents with competition categories for solo marimba and also ensemble. So like chamber ensemble. So if you're watching and you're from Australia, maybe you want to check it out. It's at marimbafest.com and at the time of uploading this video, you have only a couple of days left until you can register because we're closing on the 15th of May. That's Saturday, 15th of May. I'm really excited because I think this is the only in-person competition happening in the Southern Hemisphere. <laughs> but yeah, if you're watching from abroad, you can also follow Marimba Fest on Instagram and you can also follow Marimba Fest on Facebook. And we also have a Marimba Fest YouTube channel where we upload all the performances from the festivals. So you can check it out over there or in the description down below. Also, yeah, some of you who have followed my channel for a long time know that I started off reviewing a lot of gear and I know I haven't been doing that as much recently. That's just because I haven't received as much gear, but we're going to be receiving a pretty large instrument in the next couple of weeks so i'll let you guess what that is in the comments down below so yeah if you want to make sure that you don't miss out on content like that make sure you hit that red subscribe button below to keep up my uploads as i'm uploading every single week on this channel you versus the guy she tells you not to worry about <laughs> You know, I've always looked like such an amateur behind Timpani. <laughs> I think I've mentioned this a few times on the channel when I played that Mozart symphony and I was sitting behind Timpani as my first go and I was always late all the time on the beat. I wasn't late to rehearsal, at least. But I also didn't know about the existence of trap tables and also these mallet coat rack things. Um, so <laughs> I actually put my mallets on the floor and I remember someone being like, why are your mallets just lying on the floor? And by the way, I only had two pairs of mallets and I don't think they sounded that different anyway. Anyway, yeah, timpani is one of those things where I'm just super afraid to talk about it because I'm so amateur at it. I think I might as well just be a baby <laughs> behind the timpani. I've never made such a face after sight reading something in my head, lol. I've seen this one. <laughs> Yeah, you know, music things. <laughs> wow, that is uh, extreme bass drum playing. Oh, that bass drum is getting absolutely smashed. <laughs> Oh! Wow, wow! <laughs> With the little JoJo pose at <laughs> Wow, this is extreme. This is literally extreme. Bam! 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 <laughs> oh, wow. When your school tells you to play louder on the bass drum. <laughs> That's awesome. That's so good. Oh yeah, and uh, may the 4th be with you. Like, I don't even... To be honest, I have not watched many Star Wars movies. I think I watched Rogue One. That was the only one I watched. And that's like not even part of the normal story, right? And <laughs> I just feel really silly when everyone talks about Star Wars and I'm like... What? 
All right, in the spirit of getting closer to Marimba Fest time, we're going to be watching some more percussion audition videos. I'm really excited to watch these. So this one is from Penguin the Sniper, and it says, This is my college audition tape that got me into IU Bloomington. It was all in one take, but overall, I was happy with it. The repertoire list is Dela Clues, Etchie 2, Bach Violin Partita 2, Astral Dance by Gordon Stout, and Goodman Timpani Exercise 74. Wow, that's a very, very strong program. Let's watch. Here's the video and I'm basically just going to, wow, that is a very, uh, there's like a color scheme to this room, but there isn't a color scheme at the same time. <laughs> it just looks very neutral. I'm <laughs> uh, probably not going to stop it at all. We're just going to watch it all the way through as before. And yeah, I really wish I had a computer <laughs> to watch this on, but never mind. Let's go. All right, here's Trevor. Okay, his buzz rolls are a little bit um, tight, but the tempo is good. Yeah, the buzz rolls are tight. The soft playing is really nice. I think he's also hitting on different parts of the drum. Yeah, soft playing's awesome. Yeah, that's this nice detail. I think Trevor's normally plays traditional grip. It looks like his one hand is like stuck out slightly. Possibly. Soft buzzers are nice, but the loud ones, yeah, a little bit tight. Maybe more bounce would be nice. The kite is cool. Okay. Nice. It's pretty good. One thing I will say about Dela Cruz is that because it's more melodic, um, you might want to like sing through it first. I'll, I'll talk about this later on. But yeah, not too bad. I think this, the rolls are a little bit tight. Bach. I played this. Jig. I think he can stand back from the marimba just a little bit. I think he's a little bit too close. Accuracy is good. So it sounds like he's skipping some bars. Okay. I think you could try put some dynamic contrast in. Even though there are no dynamics marked, some implied dynamic contrast would be nice. But the tempo is good. Very steady. I'd personally adjust the tempo to suit the phrasing, but that's okay. This is for an audition, so maybe it's more appropriate to play it straight. This part's very accurate. Ah, he's, yeah, he's, he's got some dynamics there, yep, yep. Nice. <laughs> I think he cut the rest short a little bit. This is one of my favorite parts of... Yeah, this part, this part. The circle, circle of fifths. So awesome. It's very well learned. It's very well prepared. You can see the stickings are just perfect. Ooh, interesting.
interesting. Okay. He went for the big stretched out rip. Okay, it's well prepared. Yeah, the accuracy is quite good. Um, everything sounds pretty good. Nice. Well done. Okay, now we're moving to... Is this Astral Dance? Oof. That's some nice formal group. Some really nice formal group. Very steady. Nice laterals too. Good voicing. Yeah, you can really hear his top voice really well. That's awesome. Hey, let's go! Tempo is a bit unsteady here, but, but still good, still good, still good. These are very big intervals. Hey, nice. <laughs> the, the little rush. Oh, look at those left hand octaves. Ah, oh, he's using the um the octave thumb group. Could probably lift the Yeah, it could do a little bit more upstroke, but it's okay. I can see that he's trying to do something with, with the spatial parts, which is nice. The crescendos are cool. The swelling is really, really nice. Great bar placement. Look, look at where his mouths are hitting. Right on the edge. So nice. Oof. This accuracy, though. Oh! <laughs> hey. So even though the bottom mallet is kind of hard, he's careful not to make it sound too harsh on the bottom. Yeah, it's like just on the edge of being too hard, which is nice. Oh, good crossovers, look at this. Oish! Hey, look at that positioning! Using the legs, using the legs from the stance as well. It's very hard to play so many octaves like that, so he's doing a great job. A little bit of forearm stroke, but that's okay. It's, it's kind of warranted for this part. Oh, nice rolls. I could probably change the roll speed a little bit. Probably vary it just to give it some more like singing tone, but that's okay. It's a lot of stamina to roll this long with such wide intervals. You're doing great. <laughs> nice. I'm playing right in the middle of the resonators where possible as well. Hey, that's good. Probably could have done more of that pause, maybe lifted the mallets up a bit instead of just going straight across, but that's okay. Oh, that slight shaft click. Oh, yeah! I like the air in your left hand, that's nice. Careful, but still good, still good. This is a nice controlled slowdown. Clean laterals, so clean! Nice! Probably could have held that a bit longer, but, but still good, still good. Wow, that's a really impressive solo. <laughs> really clean and really well played. And not too harsh as well. Awesome. Okay. Is it Goodman solo, is it? Ooh, nice rotation. It's a good roll. Ooh, there's a cross. 
Dios. Hey. Hello, you're speaking a little bit. Hey. Oof, this is very clean. Plato's rolls may be a little bit wider apart. I'm no timpani expert though, so don't, don't quote me on that. <laughs> hey, nice. Hey, he's adjusting the roll speed. There you go. Yeah. That is a very short solo. Nice. Awesome. Yeah, okay, that's that's really good. That was a really strong audition. I'm actually really impressed uh, by how clean everything was. Now, I'd say the Della Clues, I'm no expert on snare drum. Once again, I will very happily say that my snare drum playing is okay. But when it comes to Della Clues, I think because it's more of like a melodic snare drum solo. And one of the things that I learned when I was over in America is that when you are playing through Della Clues, it's good to imagine it like a song. In fact, let me just get my Della Clues book right now. Always by the original. Okay, you could sing that as And when you think of it in melodies, you tend to play the whole thing just a lot lighter. There's something to consider. If you're not sure about your Delacruz interpretation, try singing it to a melody. And it was interesting how Trevor's elbow was kind of stuck out like, like kind of like this. And it kind of reminds me of traditional group. So maybe he's been doing marching or something. But I think if you just drop that elbow a little bit, it might make things just a little bit more streamlined. Now moving on to the marimba solo. The marimba solo, which I believe was astral dance, it was very, very well prepared. The octaves were just mint. The voicing was very good. I think the marimba piece was definitely the strongest of the three. I'd say the only thing is because it's kind of like a moto perpetuo piece, you know, there's a lot of repeated patterns. If you can make advantage of, make advantage, take advantage of any spatial areas, so anywhere where there's pauses, anywhere where you stop something and then you move to another section, take advantage of that. Maybe add some air to the stroke, lift up your mallets a little bit more, just so the audience can see like some sort of punctuation in your face. Honestly, I can't fault his grip or his technique or just the sound that he's making. It's really, really nice. Like the grip is just, woo! Like if that's what you're playing before you get into college, like you're gonna be amazing when you're in college. It's just, I wish I was that good when I got into college. <laughs> the entire audition with, in terms of like preparation, in terms of technique, in terms of just pure hard work, Trevor absolutely nailed it, and I'm really proud that you got into the college of your choice. Congratulations. Let me know that in the comments below if you have any comments about Trevor's audition. And if you're enjoying the video so far, please give me a thumbs up. I'd really appreciate it. Oh, there's someone who's played my piece. <laughs> All right, well, we have to watch this one. This is from Simon W. Simon Walrod. This is my recording of Moon for my state's solo competition. I skipped the third page because I can't reach. What? Can you do that? Can you skip pages in competitions? Well, anyway, yeah, I'm really happy that you're playing my piece. Thank you so much for your support. Um, let's watch. Okay, so here's the video. We're going to be seeing Moon played on an Acoustalon Yamaha marimba. Now, Acoustalon instruments, I have a love-hate relationship with them. I love that they're durable and stuff, but I used to have one in my high school and it just sounded absolutely trash. Thankfully, I think these days the synthetic instruments sound better, but yeah, weird memories. Okay, anyway, sorry. <laughs> Here we go. Ooh, fast entry. Ah, he's adjusting his mallets. Make sure to adjust your mouse before you start playing. Try not to do it during performance. Okay, this is good. It's good voicing. Oh, I love that slowdown. That's good phrasing, man. Hold on. Again, very good voicing. Very good. Okay. Still very good voicing. Try to lift your right hand more if you can. Yeah. 
Oh, that was a big A. <laughs> uh, uh, yeah. Oh, oh, very accurate double verticals. Oh, that's nice. Oh, well done. That's hard. Well done. Uh. Oh, the turn. Yes. Let's go. Okay, not bad, not bad. That one's a difficult turn too. He skipped. I'm assuming he's skipping the octave part, right? I wonder how he's gonna transition. Oh, that's it. I never thought about doing that. Okay. Oh, I didn't know you could do that. Okay, interesting. Nice. Okay. It's an interesting interpretation, but it, it works. The accuracy of both hands is actually very good, <laughs> I have to say. Mm -hmm. Yeah, your turning is awesome, man. Well done. Oh. Here it is. Okay, not bad. <laughs> nice with the little lift as well that's cool uh-huh okay it's a good sound really good sound Nice. Okay, good work. What we have here is, I'd say, a pretty well-prepared interpretation of Moon in terms of accuracy and sound. Now, obviously, Simon skipped out on, I think, what is probably one of the more crucial parts of Moon, which is the octave part. And I'll get to that in a second. But first, can I say, I really like how he's being super gentle with everything. Like, it's so refreshing. I've seen a lot of times where people play pieces, not just my pieces, but like pieces that are supposed to be, you know, nice and soft and gentle, and they have their moments, but generally speaking, supposed to be quite mellow, and they just have like a very hard attack on everybody. Like, dun, 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 it's not really the right idea, and it sounds really like forceful, whereas I think Simon's doing a really good job of playing gently with relatively small strokes, but he's getting some air in them as well. Uh, he could probably lift them out a little bit more, but it's a good start. I think it's definitely working towards something and at least the sound is really good. I'll also say that his parallel fourths, just really nice. I really like how he slots them in and he switched to the six so cleanly. Really, really awesome stuff. Okay, now let's talk about the octave section and how Simon skipped it. Now, I think that personally speaking, my piece isn't really fully complete without that octave section. It kind of needs to be there for it to be complete. And I think if Simon was to try this again, he could totally put it in because he said that he couldn't reach. But when I look at this video, if Simon was to put his arms all the way out with the four mallets and he just spread his legs out in a lowered stance, like bend your knees and just kind of get into this sort of, um, I call it the U position. Like, you know, your, your arms and elbows are like 90 degrees and just see how far you can reach. And I guarantee you, you'd be able to reach the furthest one, which is the A at the bottom and the G octave at the top. Thank you so much, best friend. The only reason why it might be difficult is because, yeah, playing octaves is kind of tricky. Best friend. When I first started playing marimba, yes, I have long arms, 
but I was absolutely petrified of octaves or big jumps. Like I couldn't do any of them on a five octave instrument after coming out of high school. Five octave instruments used to look huge. And now when I play on a five octave instrument, they all look really small. And now I'm just really used to it because I've played on heaps of big five octaves. Like my five octave isn't even a big one. If you think about big ones like the Malatek Grand Imperial, Master M500, those things have huge bars and I've just kind of gotten used to it. You can also opt to split them. So you can actually play the bottom one and the top one separately. Do dam if that's a little bit easier instead of playing like dan going do dam so yeah simon because i think your interpretation is so good already like everything you've done in the a section and the ending section is really really nice and i think if you could do the octave section even if it's not at like full speed it doesn't really matter like as long as you have that run going up and then you go do da if it's too far away just split it I think it would be awesome. I think you'd be so, so good. You'd have definitely one of the best renditions of Moon I would have ever heard if it had that octave section. And I'd love to see you play more. So yeah, let me know that in the comments below what you think of the performance that we just watched. And if you're enjoying the video, please give me a thumbs up. I'd really appreciate it so much. And thank you so much to Simon for submitting that in. I know it's not easy to submit a video where, you know, like it's not fully complete, but you definitely have such great ideas when it comes to interpreting my melodies and stuff like that. So well done, man. Anyway, if you'd like to submit anything to the Let's Watch channel, it doesn't have to be audition tapes. It can be literally any performance that you're involved in or someone else is involved in or marching videos, of course. We're gonna be doing marching videos next week. Go to antampercussion.com forward slash discord, yes. We have so many people on there. I think we're almost at 600. It's so cool. And finally, if you haven't already, hit that red subscribe button below to keep up my uploads. As I said, I will be having some gear sent into the studio over the next few months. Some of it will be for Marimba Fest and there's all just kinds of stuff that we're gonna see in this room and I'm gonna show it to you guys, which I think will be really fun. So make sure you hit that red subscribe button below if you haven't already. Thank you so much for watching today's episode and I'll see you guys next week for another episode of The Studio. Good night.